The abduction of 287 school students in Kuriga, the abductions of 16 children from an Islamic school, and the abductions of 112 residents of an IDP camp in Borno State are some of the notable occurrences captured in the report of military operations in the bi-weekly briefing. According to the Director of it Defense Media Operations, in that all the three major abduction cases, the military did not receive any information before or during the attacks, but learned of the incidents hours later. Preliminary investigation revealed that the internally displaced persons left camp to undisclosed locations to fetch firewood which was beyond the permissible distance approved of five to seven kilometers from their camp. Now, these internally displaced persons did not notify the camp authorities of their movement. It was later that same night at about 20, 30 hours at night when the IDPs did not return to camp, that alarm was raised as to the possible adoption by terrorists. It was at this stage that troops were notified of the incident. On the 9th of March, troops, terrorists, invaded and kidnapped 16 pupils, otherwise called al -Majiris with a woman in Gada, local government area of Sokoto State. The incident took place at about 0100 hours, which otherwise known as 1 a.m. And it was not reported to troops until about 1500 hours, otherwise 3 p.m. of the same day. Now, the late reporting of this incident affected troops' response time in the ongoing search and rescue effort. On the 7th of March, troops received information that terrorists had invaded LEA school in Chikum local government area of Kaduna State. The report indicated that they had abducted unconfirmed number of pupils now, this incident was reported barely an hour or two after it occurred. To explore the issues raised in the report a little further, we are now being joined by Professor Usman Yusuf, a professor of hematology, oncology and bone marrow transportation. Professor Yusuf was secretary of the former Chief of Defense Staff Action Committee that negotiated the su successful release of the hostages after Boko Haram attacked the Kaduna, Abuja Kaduna train on the 28th of March 2022. It's great to have you here with us this morning. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Thank you very much for morning, having Professor. me. Thank, Thank you. you for being Thank here. Thank you. Good morning for having me. Good morning. So the Good first morning, thing Steve. I'd like to ask you this morning is about the president's insistence that there is no negotiation going to happen with terrorists. Do you believe that this is a good policy initiative coming from the presidency? The refusal right. to pay No ransom. government yes. up front will say, right, I mean, no government will pay a ransom and no government will say they will pay a ransom. And, uh, the president saying that, I don't fault that at all. I mean, when we got engaged getting uh, the hostages taken after the train attack, I mean, we were upfront with them. We are not going to talk money. And there was no way we were going to escalate ransom payment to our principal for him to tell the president. So that is the position of government. and. It is up to the negotiators to continue talking to, to the hostage takers. So yes, that is the right policy to say up front and uh, government needs to be very clear, just like President Mohamed Buhari's government was clear up front. So that was the right thing. All right, Prof, uh, and thanks again for, for joining us. Um, let's dimension the issue properly uh, and to cover uh, basically what has happened in the last two weeks or thereabout. Uh, we've witnessed uh, massive kidnappings in Kaduna, 
in Boronu and in Sokoto. Um, there are soft targets, uh, pupils, students, uh, women, etc. The army is saying that um, they're a bit, you know, uh, um, handicapped in moving quickly to rescue because they, you know, gave reasons about the ID, ID uh, camp and people who moved out of there and no information was forthcoming uh, at the right time. What do you make of what has happened across those three states, given the fact that a few months ago we were dealing with issues in Plateau State and, and in Benue State in the North Central. Now we're dealing with issues in the core North. The president says uh, no going back, but at the same time he's also saying that there are agents of destabilization in the polity. Um, are there political undertones to all the kidnappings that we are witnessing, given the fact that this is about exactly 10 years after the Chibo girls kidnap in 2014? Why are we back at this juncture, Prof? Yeah, so it's a very good question, and it's a question you need to ask the president and uh, his handlers of national security. I'm very saddened, like ever right-thinking Nigerian, ever Nigerian with a beating heart should be. I truly am very saddened. It's never happened in this country that within 10 days, up to 700 people were abducted. 400 in Borno, 287 students, primary and secondary students, as young as eight and as old as 12. And then the Islamia students in, in, in Sokoto, it has never happened over 700 people abducted within a week. In Chibok, Boko Haram abducted 276. But here in Kaduna, Koriga, there's 287, broad daylight. After they had assembly, this terrorist came into the village on motorcycles, hundreds of motorcycles, surrounded the school and took these children. Those that could walk, walk. Those that could, they could hold on the motorcycle, they did. Parents in the village were seeing their children taken away and carted into the forest. You mean the question to ask is, we are talking over 100 motorcycles coming in. Nobody saw them. Where were the drones? The same drones that dropped ordinance on Tudumbiri. Where was the intelligence? that nobody could see them coming, and they took away our children. Parents were watching them into the forest. And we are all parents. I mean, this is failure of us as parents, failure of us as leaders, failure of government. The primary responsibility of government is one on one alone, to protect its people and its welfare. So, the military will do very well not giving excuses. This is the same thing we had from the spokesman of President Muhammadu Buhari, remember, after rice farmers were slaughtered in Zabarmari, Borno State. He came out and said it was the fault of, of the farmers because they did not inform the military. So the military at times like this, for oh, goodness sake, you did the same thing after Tudumbiri. Don't do that again. There was a failure. You're going to correct it. And you must get your house in order. It's not only the military. Why is the DSS? Why is the police? Everything military, military, military. There is not a single police station in that village. In that village. We expect the military to be everywhere to do everything. This is clear failure of intelligence, clear failure of intelligence. And the military, please, please, please stop giving excuses for all of this. This is inexcusable. Things have happened. Tell Nigerians how you're going to get this, their, their children out. Tell Nigerians how you get their mothers and sisters and grandmothers out. Tell Nigerians how you get those children from, from Sokoto out. Instead of giving excuses, excuses do nothing but irritate Nigerians. We are not in the best of mood. People are suffering. People are hardly having anything to eat. We're in the period of Ramadan, praying. Things like this happen. People are prayerful. 
not only for themselves, for the children, for our security forces, and for all the gallant things they do. Excuses help nobody and they make us uh, not happy. But this is a failure, just like President Muhammad Buhari must take responsibility for all the things that happened during his time. This government must too. This is coming 10 years after Chibok. Chibok happened in April 2014. So 2024, almost 10 years to the date, we are having the same thing. So we haven't learned anything over the last 10 years. We've had safe school initiatives only by mouth. The world is watching us. Professor, the world is watching. Professor Osman, um, the Financial Times in this case, an editorial said these kidnappings are just uh, signs of a failing state. This is not good. For us as a country, for us as a people. I have friends all over the world, Qatari friends, friends from Dubai all over the world calling me yesterday and saying, Osman, what is happening? How can any foreign investor come to Nigeria when you're, we are still terrorists, are still cutting our children into the forest? Where is our humanity as a people? Where is the government? The military is overdoing things, overtaking responsibility. Where is everybody else? Where is everybody else? So the primary thing to do now is to find a way to get these children out. We will have a time where we'll start blaming whoever needs to be blamed. And you don't get these children out by going and blasting everybody and killing that. The military knows that and the military has been. And I will commend the military for this. Since Boko Haram, since, since Chibok, the military has been consistent and mature and compassionate enough in whatever operation they do to rescue hostages, they don't go there recklessly to kill people. Like I hear some pundits advocating. So the military is mature enough, has had enough experience to know how to get this, our children out with the help of all other security services. And that is our prayer. The primary thing now is to identify who are these bad guys. What are their motives, if any? Where are they located? And how do we get to them? And I call on the government and all pundits, especially those that speak Hausa on, on, on radio and television, to dial down. Whatever we say, these bad guys hear us. Now is not the time for making noise, but time for quiet action to get everybody out, from the 400 women taken from Borno to the 287 children taken from Koriga and from the uh, children taken from Gada local government. But this is a very sad moment for the whole country. And our prayer is that these children get out of uh, captivity and these women get rescued without any loss of life. Professor Usman, uh, you've started off this conversation on, you. A, on a very uh, a serious note, talking about the fact that we need to take action. And when we look at the federal government's stance not to negotiate with terrorists, coming 24 hours after Kaduna-based Muslim cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi offered to approach and have a dialogue with these terrorists who abducted the pupils, he also advised that to facilitate this release, uh, uh, facilitate the release rather of the abducted school children and warning against uh, President Tinubu repeating the same mistake uh, by his immediate predecessor, uh, President, uh, former President Muhammadu Buhari, who also refused to negotiate with, terror, uh, with bandits. Now, do you believe it's prudent for the government to leverage his intelligence and expertise in tracking down these kidnappers, especially considering the risks of not negotiating with them? He has met with them a number of times. He has an idea where they are. Is it possible that this can be what we need to be able to find, track them and find them and bring these children back home? Yeah, no, Sheikh Ahmed Gumi is, uh, and we, we went into the forest, I and the rest of his team went into the forest with him, nine states, and we engaged the leadership of all these bad guys. And he's not offering, he's not saying that I know where they are, I'm, I want to get them out, no. We have been saying it over and over and over again. He's looking at the global, not this little getting this out. We've gotten how many out? 
we've gotten a faka out, we've gotten trained people out, we've gotten this out, we, then what? Where did we go beyond that? We have to look at global. And that is what he was saying. We have to, all of us, we have to get involved and see how we can bring peace to our land. Nobody can bring peace to us. And at this moment, I have to, uh, I have to appeal to our northern leadership. We have had a northern president from Katsina for eight years. Before he came, we did not have a single IDP. All our local governments were safe. Now, Katsina State, 22 out of 34 local governments. That is 65% of Katsina. It's under siege. Borno State is more secure and safer than Katsina. That we had a president who is from there. That is a failing of us northerners. We need to look at ourselves. And now here we are. We have a leadership. We have a vice president number two who is from the north. We have a speaker of the house who is number, f number three, number four, who is from the north. We have an SGF who, who is from the north. We have the, 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 the senior most military officer who is from the north. We have uh, all the ministers of defense from the north. We have the minister of police from the north. We have the national security advisor from the north. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will look at us and say, you guys have no excuse not to bring peace to your land. So it is up to us to look at ourselves in the mirror. We Northerners, especially those in government, and lock the door and say, people, how do we take care of these problems? President Bola Ahmed Tinubu from the Southwest cannot come and bring peace to us. It is us that must bring peace to ourselves. And it is not the military that will bring peace. I've said it again and again, banditry can never be won on the battlefield. We are just putting the military to clean up after this mess. They're everywhere. So northern leadership, all of us, must come in, lock the door, and sit down and see how we can bring peace to our land. 15 years of Boko Haram, nine years of banditry. Are we going to continue this forever? It's going to be a forever war. We are all here in Abuja. Our children in the villages have been taken away. Our women in the villages have been raped. Our farmers cannot go into the, in, 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 to their farms. Did you guys see the primary school of Koriga? I have friends in the United States come, call, calling me and say, did you see the primary school where these kids were taken? Blown roof, nothing, nothing there. Well, this is the leadership of the North that fuels all of this. And we're looking elsewhere, we are blaming somebody else. No. Leaders of the North, those in government and out of government, it's time for us to look ourselves in the face and say, we have failed our people, we need to do better. The military cannot bring peace to ourselves. None. We must all get involved and stop this nonsense, this boko haram, this, this banditry that has pauperized our people, that has pillaged our, our land, our people cannot go to farm. And we're expecting the military to th throw drones and bring peace to us. No, it is us that will bring peace to ourselves. And that is what Shegumi is saying. We have to all get involved, look at the global peace, and see how we can bring peace to ourselves. Peace will never come from Abuja. All the military has to come from us, we the people that live there. And those in government, you're in government for a purpose. You're not in government to be going around in Abuja in big black SUVs and overstarched with Thank you. Bring peace to your land. Yes. For goodness sake. Yes, sir. I would like to... Thank you. Thank you, sir. You've been speaking about northern leadership um, particularly, so I would like to talk about something that happened this week with the Northern Senators Forum when the chairman, Abdul Ningi, was suspended. He is a senator for Bauchi Central from the PDP and has now been replaced with Senator Yaradua from Katsina, um, the state that you were just talking about, is facing a high level of insecurity. Do you believe that the Senate was right to suspend um, Senator Ningi, especially Especially as he raised the issue of discrepancies in constituency projects. Now, it's been reported that the Senate President, um, Gutwil Akbabio, and Akwai Bom Northwest Senatorial District has received over 21 billion naira from just two ministries the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security 
and the Ministry of Women Affairs, just two ministries, giving Aquaibom Northwest Senatorial Zone over 20 billion naira in co budgeted for constituency projects. Whereas some senators have come out to say, and Senator Abdul Ningi is saying, that some constituencies are receiving much less, and he was speaking about the North in particular. Do you think that there is inequity in the Senate, and do you think that his suspension was the right course of action for the Senate to take? Right. I think uh, uh, Senator Abdul Ningi blew the whistle uh, rather too loud for some people's ears. The honest truth is I am not a senator, but I was ashamed that these are our representatives that have a prefix distinguished. Well, they clearly distinguish themselves. That was a circus. That was disgraceful and shameful. These are our senators standing up and telling the world this is what we got. Each senator, you like it or not, I did the math. Oh, we got 200. Oh, some people got 500. Oh, some people got 300. When many millions of Nigerians go to bed hungry, our elected representatives are mourning on the floor of the Senate that this is what they got, this is what they got. Fellow Nigerians, there are over, there are 109 senators. Do the math. If each one of them gets about 250 million, it will be a total of up to 27 billion. Oh, constituency project. After they, they, they were given by Mr. President 164 million to buy bulletproof cars. So it is all about them, not the people that send them there. I mean, these cannot continue. We, the people, are watching them. We are not proud of you. We are ashamed of you. And, 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 and the Senate President, Senator Akbabio, is, 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 is the most disgraceful I've ever seen. 21 billion to your constituency. A, a, a street light, a, a solar light was selling at, on the budget over 190 million. Bohol, over 180 million each. Come on, people, this is not corruption, what is? If this is not corruption, what is? At a time when our people are dying of hunger, at a time when our children are being admitted with marasmus and kwashoko, at a time when millions of patients are abandoning taking their medications because they cannot afford it, our representatives are feeding fat on our, on our commonwealth. And then all of a sudden they're saying, oh, northern senators, southern senators. Yeah, but when they came to share, there was no north or south. Come on, people, we are fed up with you, our elected representatives. We're terribly disappointed. This cannot continue. We didn't send you to go and be divvying up our national commonwealth when your people out there are dying. Well, I sent it to many senators. Well, what they did? Tell me what they did. Oh, some of them sent me oh, trailer loads of, of grains they are taking home. So, 64 years after independence, our people are turned into beggars. Like you see in Afghanistan, or northern Gaza, or Sudan, distributing grains. Distributing grains in this land of plenty. In this land of plenty, we have insecurity, we have poverty, we have hunger. Children are out of school. And you're here in Abuja distributing money, and we think, we are surprised there is insecurity in this country. No country, no nation, no matter how, 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 how powerful, will have peace with this much inequity. I've said it again and again. So, our senators, we are terribly ashamed of all of you, and you should return that money. And my advice to Senator, the Senate President, is to resign honorably and return that money. 21 billion to your constituency alone is what but inequity. Please, right, please. Mm. And Nigerians must raise their voices. This is not acceptable. This is not acceptable.
So there's corruption in the executive. There's corruption in the, in, in the National Assembly. There's corruption everywhere. And you expect peace? We'll just be deluding ourselves. All right, Prof. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, the Senate President will have a response for you, like he did for PDP, who also called for his uh, resignation because he claims he has done nothing wrong and that it is conventional uh, for the senators to share constituency allowance among their constituents. But that's not where I'm going. Uh, before we let you go, sir, uh, I would like your thoughts on the uh, removal of um, uh, sanctions on Niger Republic, uh, first by the ECOWAS Commission, and of course, given the fact that the president is the chairman of ECOWAS Commission, Nigeria has also lifted some sanctions and open borders. But this morning, uh, Daily Trust is reporting uh, that Niger uh, is preventing entry from Katsina and Jigawa borders, uh, basically saying that, you know, whatever Nigeria or ECOWAS might have decided is none of their business. What's your understanding of what's going on and do you think that Nigeria and ECOWAS have handled this uh, diplomatically well? Am I an audio issue? C can you hear me, Prof? Prof, can you hear me? I can't hear. Uh, sadly, okay, he can hear us. All right, that's, that's fine. Uh, that's Professor uh, Usman Yusuf there. Uh, we would have wanted him to talk a bit more on the Niger Re Republic, but no problem. Thank you so much for joining us today, Professor Usman.